Thank you so much, Julie. Well, the hunt for Edward Snowden just got a little more complicated. This morning, Russia's foreign minister rejected U.S. demands to extradite the NSA leaker. Here to talk more about the latest is Clifford May, president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Good to you. be with you, Al. Um, let, let's start. We were talking a bit before, and uh, the question is, are we sort of getting our priorities mixed up? The story now seems to be the hunt for Edward Snowden versus the original story mm. that, uh, you know, where are we that all these secrets can be leaked by one person? Are we mixing our priorities up? Well, there's a failure on many levels, but we probably do want to prioritize them. And the highest priority, it seems to me, is the fact that very sensitive information has been leaked to our enemies, to terrorists and others who want to do us damage, and this could lead to the deaths of Americans. This is very, very bad when this kind of thing gets out. We're in more danger today than we were because of this. Secondly, it has to be said that the intelligence community has not done a good job of keeping secrets. Mm. And this is hard on the heels of the Bradley Manning case in which hundreds of thousands of documents also were stolen and leaked and dispersed out there. That's very bad as well. Right. And then third, we have the diplomatic problem, which is getting some focus now because the Russians and the Chinese are saying, we're not here to help you. We're not going to cooperate with you. Despite the reset with Russia, um, we're getting no cooperation from the Russians or pretty much anybody else. Makes the U.S. look pretty impotent. So uh, the news today, back to the hunt for him, is that he might in fact be in, hold out in a Russian, in, in Moscow, in an airport. How realistic is this? And well, he could be at the airport or he could be at, at the headquarters of Russian intelligence. We have to figure that both the Russians and the Chinese by now have downloaded everything in his computer. Perhaps they've interrogated them, learned everything they can possibly learn, walked away with a treasure trove of information about our intelligence gathering and about how we do that kind of work. Um, that's very, very bad. And when the Secretary of State says to the Russians, we want this guy arrested and brought back to the U.S., they say that's really not our problem. Right. And, and in fact, um, both Hong Kong and Russia, the, the sentiment seemed to echo them, each other when they say that the uh, U.S. demands for his extradition are ungrounded and unacceptable. Oh, what do you think about those are strong words uh, they're strong words acceptable to me is the strongest one it is indeed yes. and uh, it, 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 it certainly shows a lack of respect for the for the for the United States right. and for the relationship here and we've heard from some US spokesmen that there will be repercussions from this I think the Chinese and the Russians don't believe there'll be repercussions that they're worried about or those in Ecuador if that's where he eventually turns up. And let's talk way. about that. So the next step, you know, in that side of the story might be Ecuador going through some uh, very suspect route to get to Ecuador, talking about Cuba and other nations with the same sort of track record on, on, um, on just the way that they treat uh, their own citizens there, which is also very interesting. And I got to wonder, and aside, in the mind of Edward Snowden, is this how he thought this would play out? Well, it's, it's a good point because he is trying to present himself, I don't buy it, uh, some do, as somebody who is working for freedom and is exposing things the United States is doing that's wrong, gathering intelligence. I think the United States should be gathering intelligence. I think it's very necessary right now. But then he is doing that by going to countries that have no press freedom right. and countries that violate human rights. Uh, you know, we're talking about China, we're talking about Russia, we're talking about Ecuador, countries that, and Ecuador is one of them, that are very anti-American uh, anti as well. And I think it shows that he is anti-American myself. Well, because you, you have to wonder why uh, he would seek safe haven in those nations. Uh, you do, and part of the reason is because those are nations that will not uh, give him back to the U.S. and won't cooperate. But for, in terms of Ecuador, something. what's that? Who wants something? And who from wants something? Host, absolutely, right? and who want? And who, most of all, who want to weaken and diminish the United States? And there are plenty of countries out there who want to do that, and we have to be realistic about it. And by the way, there should be repercussions for Ecuador if they do. If Ecuador does take him, Ecuador also has Julian Assange and his embassy in London for a year now hosting him as well, somebody else who seeks to do us damage. Trade with Ecuador should suffer as a result of this. Getting back to the initial story here, this information that was leaked, have we seen the end of that, do you think? We haven't. I don't think we know uh, the extent of the damage. We don't even know how many documents, though we're talking in the thousands and maybe more than that. Uh, there, there need to be questions about how he had access to all this, how he was able to download all this. Again, we're not doing very well at keeping secrets. And again, I mentioned him, I mentioned Bradley Manning, but if you think back to the Cold War, we had a mole in the, C, in the CIA, Aldridge Ames, for at least eight years, turning over our secrets to the Russians. We had a mole in the FBI 
for more than that, for, for something like 20 years, uh, Robert Hansen, who was turning information and revealing our agents abroad to the Soviets and then to the Russian Federation afterwards. We really do have a problem, we have to admit, about in terms of keeping secrets. Clifford May is the president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thanks for uh, being with us today. Thank you. Tony.